Apologies for the wait. Gabu, have you been good? Still no change, I'm afraid. He just stands there in silence until we move him. It's all right now. We're going to help you get better. Fancy meeting you here. Alfano Yushtola! I thought you were attending to primal matters. We were, and came here for a meeting on the subject. Certain pirate factions did not deign to attend, however, and it was cancelled. We had resigned ourselves to having wasted a journey when we chanced to espy you. Could it be that there has been progress with the treatment? Using Magitech terminals to formulate the solution. I would never have contemplated such an approach. So this new magic, adapted from memory transference, would be used to purge the subject of their fanatical faith, while Angelo would be responsible for reanimating the ether of their soul. Hmm. Yet I wonder at the practicalities. If one were to reanimate the soul first, it would only serve to exacerbate the tempering. Conversely, a stagnant soul would not respond to the effects of the magic would both need to be performed simultaneously. Ah, nothing escapes Master Matoya's inquiring eye. As you say, both must be carried out simultaneously. And thus, I propose to imbue Angelo with a tempering treatment in much the same manner as I did the spirit vessels. By doing so, we also spare Graha the trouble of casting spell after spell. It's really rather efficient. Be that as it may, certain difficulties are unavoidable. The imbuing process will still require no small amount of ether. And, as I can no longer draw upon the Crystal Tower's stores of energy, I will be compelled to rely on those of others. Well, I, for one, would be glad to assist. As would I. Since the resumption of our duties, it has been naught but stuffy meetings, and I have ample ether to spare. Excellent. With your permission, then, let us begin. Yes, this will do! And now, it's my turn. Done. No small amount indeed. Oh. Well, we seek to go where even the Allegans did not. It was never like to be easy. The rest is up to you, Alize. The treatment itself will take time and focus. 
so we will need a quiet room. I'm sure our hosts can spare one. I will go with her. It may be a while before we return, so I would ask for your patience and your faith. We'll bring Gabu back. You see if we don't. Twould seem our part is played. Let us find a place to recuperate while we wait for news. For years, Eorzea has laboured to find a solution to the primal problem, without success. Any hope that tempering could be reversed faded long ago. I myself had given it up as impossible. Given up on the tempered and the light corrupted alike. They were problems to be tolerated, or else eliminated, I believed. And to think otherwise was pure naivety. Childishness, even. But Alizé refused to give up. She struggled and she struggled. And her efforts were rewarded with a way to bring back Halric. And now countless others may no longer be beyond salvation. However much we bicker, I have the greatest respect for my sister. Had I half her stubbornness, nay, her unwillingness to accept the status quo, I would be a far better person. A far better scion. She told you of my graduation thesis. How very embarrassing. Nonetheless, it is comforting and not a little surprising to hear that I'm still capable of impressing my sister. On the rare occasions I'm not annoying her, that is. Alizé, are you all right? The treatment. Did it work? Oh, I'm so glad to see you all. Delighted, happy, glad. Gabu! filled with thoughts of Great Father Titan. But I never forgot about Mother and Father. Always, they were in my heart. Constantly, ever, always. So I tried to focus on their faces. Theirs and yours. Alizé's and everyone's. And I found that I could remember. One thing, then another, and another. Your hopes reached Gabu. They helped him to hold on. I'm so proud of you, Gabu. 
I couldn't have done it without you, Alize. Can you help the others too? Cure them? Heal them? Help them? Yes, we can. All of them. <clears throat> Without wishing to dampen the mood, I feel compelled to add certain caveats regarding the viability of the treatment for general use. As you know, reversing the effects of tempering demands a profuse amount of ether. And while Alize was able to heal Gabu alone, I fear the same will not be true for those who exhibit more advanced symptoms. Moreover, the treatment's effects are limited to the soul. It offers no succor to those whose very flesh has been altered through prolonged exposure to a primal's influence. All of which is to say that we cannot save everyone. Maybe we can't, or maybe we can. No one gave us a hope of saving Gabu, and yet here we are. We must find a way to treat as many as possible. Then, the next logical step would be to produce a veritable army of porkses, would it not? Granted, it seemed a simple enough process in the first, but I suspect it will be different here in the source. Not that I am any authority, of course. Yet there is an authority on familiars to whom we may grudgingly turn. She's stubborn, haughty, eccentric, irascible, laconic, annoying. And her name is Master Matoya, the real one. I have to go now, Gabu. But the people here will look after you, all right? And I promise to come and visit you again soon. All right. Thank you, Alizé. Thank you.
nary a word from you all this time, then you bring every man and his pirogo with you. Did no one teach you any manners, girl? They were too busy teaching me etherology, master. Jesting aside, I wanted to be the one to express our gratitude. I am told you spared no effort to sustain our bodies while we were away. And for that, we owe you our lives. Thank you. <laughs> you were gone so long. I was starting to think you'd set your heart on staying. It wasn't easy to leave, as it happens. Seldom does one have the opportunity to study other worlds, and I would not have minded extending my stay by a handful of years. Ever the scholar, Yishtola dedicated herself to studying ancient civilizations of the first, befriending a tribe known as the Knights Blessed in the process. There she took on the name of Matoya and won the respect of all the children of the forest. I merely adopted an alias in accordance with the custom of my hosts. Yours just happened to be the first name that came to mind. You mean to tell me you went gallivanting about using my name and only bother to visit when you need a favor? And don't pretend you don't. I taught you long enough. Indeed. And devoted pupil that I am, I could not fail to recall my master's sage advice. When the answer eludes you, look to the wisdom of your elders. You there. Were you going to introduce yourself? How remiss of me. Grahatia is my name, and I am proud to call myself a scion. I too wish to offer my gratitude for your invaluable aid in sustaining the Archon's bodies, as well as my apologies. It was my inexpert summoning spell which endangered their lives in the first place. Ah, yes. The one bent on digging up the mysteries of Alag. Old Galaf used to speak of you, and Kryles told me all about your recent exploits. Do you have a bad back or something? At ease, boy. Whatever mess you've made, I'm not in the habit of dwelling on the failings of the younger generation. You are too kind. I have also heard much and more about you, Master Matoya. It is an honor to finally make your acquaintance. Well, that's more than enough pleasantries for anyone. Tell me what you want. I haven't got all day. So that's the way of it. It should be a simple enough matter to make the familiar. The magic, on the other hand. Ah, that you may leave to me. Being the only one possessed of royal blood, I alone can imbue the subject with the necessary magic. So I just need to create Porxes with the power to stir the soul. Just, I say. Though we're talking about a veritable herd of the little buggers, we'd collapse before we reached double figures. But, if I could get a familiar to create the familiars, 
a mother poxy, as it were. Seems I haven't seen the last of that moldy old hole after all. Right. To begin with, I need you to gather a few ingredients. 
Listen well to what the Porogos say, or your wish you had.
Right then. Let's get this over with. Newborns are wont to be difficult. <laughs> sure, who's in charge?
There we are. Quite tame. Then all that remains is for me to imbue her with the magic. My friends, I'm afraid I must trouble you for your ether once more. That should suffice. Good. Let's set her to work then, shall we? I want to see some corpses. Assuming that is, someone can spare the requisite energy. A mere drop in the ocean for the great sorceress Matoya, I dare say. Excellent. Our very own litter of Angelos. And we can make as many more as we want, simply by providing the Mother Porksy with additional ether. I will require a moment before I try again. It's still hard work, but a damn sight more efficient than making them one by one. Thank you, Master Matoya. Everyone, we're a step closer to our goal. Distributed amongst the Allied Nations, they should do much to facilitate closer dialogue with the Beast Tribes. And given their present travails, I believe our friends in Limsa Laminsa should be the first beneficiaries. Agreed. Though I must leave this errand to you. I doubt my legs will carry me out of the cave, much less to Vilbrand. Thank you for taking the lead in gathering the ingredients. I expect you would benefit from a rest too. In addition to the porkses, I trust you've gained an inkling of how much effort goes into the creation of familiars. Or mayhap you attribute your struggles to old age. If I said yes, would it persuade you to treat me like an adult? <laughs> Not with that pertness, it wouldn't. Anyway, assuming you have no other favors to ask, I shall be leaving. <laughs> 